Hi guys, thank you for joining me on this video. Today we've got a new one. We're gonna be taking a look at how to arrange some strings. Using some different techniques, I'm gonna show you the libraries that I like to use, just in case you're interested. Um, but more so, it's gonna be how to orchestrate the strings from violins right down to double bass. I wrote a small piece, and um, what we'll do is we'll develop this piece into a full orchestral piece over a few videos. But yeah, before we get into it anyway, uh, please like and subscribe. That'd be really, really helpful. I've loved seeing that there's been some growth uh, since the past few videos have gone up. Yeah, it just makes me really happy. And if you'd like to join the Discord as well, there's a link down here as well in the description. We'd love to see it. We're a big friendly group um, and yeah, we love composition. We love talking about hiking and all of the good stuff. It's it's all in there. So um, yeah, we'd really like to see you. So uh, let's get straight into it, shall we? So you can see here that I've got quite a lot of <laughs> instruments and this is basically how I like to do it. I think there's lots of other people who do this and I was considering actually, you know, why should I put something up? Because there's so many amazing orchestrators out there, especially for strings, but strings are actually one of the most complex things that we can actually approach when we're, when we're writing. They take up, you know, about 60, 70% of the orchestra in terms of people. Uh, there's books that are like this thick that, you know, I've read and still haven't thought I've had a full grasp on um, what strings actually do. So maybe this can give you a little bit of an idea on how I actually formulate some of the ideas. Okay, and for this track, I did something that I never do, which is I didn't use a piano score. I I generally, I just went by feel. We just started off with some textures and I think that is the best way that we can actually approach writing strings is actually, okay, right, let's just get our mood going. Um, so I'm just gonna show you two patches I've got here. So there was a sunset strings patch um, and I've also used the drama toolkit. So you'll see that I've used a lot of Spitfire because I quite like Spitfire for their strings. I deviate in, in later videos actually um, when I go to brass and woodwind and, and a lot of other libraries but this is really it's quite spitfire heavy so um yeah brilliant job spitfire you done fantastic and um, but sunset strings as well this is fantastic as good as well so i'll just uh i'll play the the textures just so you can get the feel of what um of what i was actually trying to uh convey before we listen to the full track Okay, we've got a nice drone there then that 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 continues very subtly um, as the rest of the actual string orchestra come in. But I used ricochets in there, so that's just adding some of these bounces. A ricochet is just when the violinist is playing and they drop the 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 bow and pull at the same time. So they get a ricochet effect and um it's a little bit like adding a, a tape delay actually to the to the to the strings. So if you haven't got this, you've got a tape delay, stick the tape delay on there and then use that as a texture in your pieces and it'll sound pretty much the same. It's a really really cool um, technique to use. Then in the drama toolkit I'm just using um, the texture pads that they have for strings there which just kind of adds again a couple of those ricochet kind of sounds and there's a few harmonics in there and it just fills out the sound beautifully. I started at texture two, but now we're going on to texture one, which is just flautando on harmonics. So you'll hear that I use this quite a lot. And it's just a drone, it's just a high drone. You can use a drone really high up, re really low down or somewhere in the middle. Yeah, and when you put a drone um, in a piece, I would suggest that every everywhere else is going to be moving other than that that frequency range. So if it's high, then use something maybe lower or in your or, you know or in your mid range to move. If it's lower, then move some use something in the mid range or higher. If it's in the mid range, you can go both and have some contrary motion. Yeah. If you don't know what contrary motion is, contrary motion is when one thing's moving this way and the other is moving in a different way. It could be, you know, up, down, different rhythm. Yeah, I hope that clears that up. So I've only used solos where it's needed. 
And what I would say is after you've got your arrangement together, what I would say for you to do is the bits that are moving the most that you want the uh, the person to hear, take those, just take the snippets exactly like you can see here. There, what I'm trying to do is just, uh, just, just pull those things out because if we double clicked on one of these and had a look at the automation, I'm already doing so much automation here. There's loads of it. And every single track is slightly different. The one thing I don't want to do there is actually have to go in and use um, volume automation then like huge amounts that that would just take, it would take forever. Um, even though I do that a lot later on in the mixing phase, I don't want to do it here in the arrangement phase. And if I open this up, you can see actually there's not a lot there. I've just kind of got things to where they should roughly be. So I'm going to let you listen to the, um, the full track now um, and then we'll talk about it. So there, what you can hear is that um, I've got some themes going on. I've got this um, da 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 thing that comes in straight away. So we can we can hear that here, and it's on the solo cello. Okay, so that is our second theme. Our first theme, we're not even aware of at first because it's actually on this double bass pizzicato. Okay, and that theme there is actually the theme that the, the whole track is, is kind of based around. Okay, so we got this bom, bom, bom. Um, and then if we go to the end here, we will hear it again in the violins. Yeah, so ba da 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 da. So we can hear there that it's it's an evolution. We've we've actually developed that. So at first, at the beginning of the actual piece, we've gone bom bom bom, bom bom bom, bom 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 bom. Then we go into our violas and we actually do that again on the pizzicato, underneath the melody that is actually there. And this is where it's developing now. Yeah, and then that is then t being taken over by what is on top, which is the violins. Okay, so that my, th my first tip for you is to take a theme, create it. You know, your theme could be anything in the world. It could be... Um, So that's a great theme in itself, but at first you could just take a little bit of that. So it might not be the, it could just be this. Yeah, 
Yeah, so that there could start off the track. And you could gently build everything else around that then. Ba -da -da, that I had earlier actually isn't too dissimilar to what actually comes in on that cello. Ba -da -da, different notes, but bum 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 is is kind of like, you know, it's 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 in the same ballpark, isn't it? Yeah, so so making links between your themes is actually quite important when we're actually um, coming along to actually orchestrate the piece. Um, so harmonically then, I had to do something that was a little bit more exciting because if we then go to where the violins take over that second theme, long legato patches. There we go. So we've got, you know, we've got these intricate interwoven bits, but in longer, in, in the midst, really, of longer notes. Um, and I think that allows the rest of the string section to then play parts around those intricate bits that you have wrote as a melody, which lead us through the piece in a more elegant way than if we were to just put all of those parts just on the violin. So if we were to take the three parts that I'm talking about here, I, I split the the ideas between the violin one, viola, um, which I, the viola I split into two sections, double bass. So, that's the first bit. So that was the double bass. There we go. So then we've got the viola here in this section taking over what of the violin is actually playing. But then here, this is actually um, a form of what's actually going to happen here. So we're setting the listener up for what the violin, which is is really it's the the main instrument, the top instrument that we're, that people are actually going to hear melodically because it sits on top. Um, we're actually preparing them here. OK, so um, if we just take a little listen, even though the notes aren't there, it's still moving in the same way. So if we take a listen. OK, and then they go into unison just to strengthen that um, that main theme that I wanted to to come out. Um, and this actually is a form of what in musical terms we call diminution. And diminution is essentially when we take something and we either elongate it. Now, a lot of the time, we don't necessarily know what we can actually do between violin and violin two. Here, let's just take a little look at violin two. So here, violin, violin two is playing the melody. Okay, but what happens now is they split into harmony, unison, and then thirds and fourths. And here, this is this is really important. This bit, okay. So this part we're familiar with. Moving in thirds in uh, when it's really high is is really good to do. But then spreading out your your strings as much as you can, um, and especially holding longer notes in the second violin whilst the first violin does all of its fancy stuff is actually a really lovely way to. Um, add interest and actually support the harmonic foundation of the first violin whilst the second violin stays static. Um, and also don't be don't be afraid of of going in unison. A lot of the time we, we might think, OK, right, so we've got all these parts that we can write for. We've got all these instruments, so we're going to have harmony stuck on top of harmony on top of harmony. No, don't do that. Use it. Use your three, maybe four parts. Yeah, um, I would say your harmonic parts 
are your um, are your are your foundation yeah so that's one part so even if you've got different harmonies all moving in different parts that's still one part okay then what you can actually do is you can then start to move as we can see here from a static part into a more supportive part but moving in harmony okay and this is just on two tracks this is that so we can we can move in we can interweave between these ideas that we've got um, on the same instrument because when that's happening in the second violin then the static part goes down to the viola and the viola here you can see just plays a g okay so we'll just take a little listen to this next part so you can hear how that harmonic movement in the same or, or at least almost the same rhythm supports that main uh, melody Okay, and there they're moving in contrary motion again. Okay, so one part's going down, the other part for the most part is then going down, but then at the end is moving back up. Okay, so that can then add a little bit more emotion. Um, and when parts move in contrary motion, what we are actually doing is we are avoiding the dreaded unison movement. Um, so it's dependent on what we're writing for, but generally lower down fifths don't sound great. Thirds sound really good, high. Close harmony as well doesn't necessarily sound great lower in an orchestra, um, unless you're a brass section, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that later. Moving on to the last section, just to keep this a bit shorter, you'll hear that the main melody comes in, um, which I've got in octaves, so in the, um, the cello and the violin at one and two, but then we've got violin two still staying in harmony with the viola. Okay, and you can hear there that's just those parts especially in the main in the main piece even though it kind of sounds a little bit sloppy when I play them just on their own like that but in in the context of the piece they're just adding um, harmonic foundation because everything else is in unison and then to add a little bit more interest what I've done then is I've gone to the cellos and the double basses I've moved moved to spiccatos before moving back then into a legato just to finish it and that's just to push everything along a little bit more because we've we've then we've now created momentum okay so it starts off slow we've added a melody in and as the melodies come along um we've added um, different counter melodies that are coming in throughout the string orchestra so that then uh, what we can do is we can build to this climactic section that has the main melody the main theme as its epicenter with some harmonic stuff around it and the 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 lower bass register just playing tonic notes essentially and then I had these spiccatos just to push it along because that that main melody ba 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 is a little bit faster. It feels a little bit faster because the mel the melody the initial melody that we introduced at the beginning is now complete and it's a little bit more of a faster melody as well. So it's it's essentially in double time. As opposed to this. Yeah, which is just adding like, that's almost like underscore. Yeah, so that's like an underscore and a precursor to what's gonna gonna come. Because if it was if it was um, in double time, it'd be da 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 or whatever. Um, okay, so we'll listen to that final section now with those spiccatos. <laughs> And 
then that concludes the idea then. Then that gives um, a little bit of space as those strings are coming out for maybe, you know, for the next part of the piece to come in, maybe for the woodwinds to, to come in with, with a development of that theme, maybe with a new theme. It might be even a little bit early at 1 minutes 50 for a new theme. Who knows? I've not wrote that bit yet. So uh, we'll see how that bit goes. Um, but yeah, that's that's essentially how I how I then formulate these ideas. And then I also add runs in just to to add that little bit of, you know, on the end. So um, you can hear here. Ta -da -da -dum. Yeah, we've got that. And here we've got the do -da 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 -dum. So those kind of things as well, they can add a little bit of spice to your piece as well. Um, and those are just runs that I've got from Albion. Um, in the future, I'll be doing a whole video on Albion because it's one of those libraries I think I've fallen back in love with again um, because there's so many great things in it. That'll be coming pretty soon. So that's everything really. That concludes um, this video. But before we go, I just want to say that I use BBC BPCSO for most of these. So violin one was BPCSO. Then I went on to um, Tableau Chamber Strings. Oh, for violin two, sorry. The rest are in there are just BPCSO. Uh, then we've got Joshua Bell violin. So I just use this because it's got a really nice um, portamento and it's scripted fantastically for this style as well. Joshua Bell works really, really well. Um, <laughs> rhymes. Yeah, so for the cello, I use um, I use the soft legato there as well for the solo. So then here you can see for solo strings, then I've got the cello true legato, the cello true legato again. I think I've got different settings. And then uh, for the double bass again, I've got the bass true legato, which sounds lovely. And I, I, I switch in between those a lot, actually, um, because they do certain things very well. So Joshua Bell is really, really good at those, at switching in between lots of different things. It's quite a romantic sound. Um, it doesn't always do exactly what I want it to do. And when you actually do need to script it, it's a little bit fidgety. But it does work very, very well for things like this. There'll be some tweaks I, I do in this piece for that that I'm not looking forward to. But it's it's good. It's got it's got the sound. And then the Sinner strings, they do they do everything I want them to do. However, um the portamento and the sliding in between the notes is um quite difficult to do. So in that instance, then I do go to the um go to these tableau solo strings and you can actually go in here and you can actually come down here and um for each velocity layer that they've got you can actually go in here and say whether you want it portamento or an ornament or legato i've just stuck it to legato so far but um it could be quite nice actually to add some um nuances maybe with um, upper and lower neighbor notes, which are essentially what the ornament, um, ornament legatos are. Uh, and I think that's everything that I'm using, guys. So uh, thank you so much for coming to watch this video. I hope it's useful for you and uh, we'll see you again. Bye bye.